All right, so next up on our list is overclocking the GPU of our Blocks 2 as we continue our 64-bit uh, kernel development and modification. So hopefully you'll find this exciting as I do. Uh, I think it's just great. Um, there's a few things that might be a little confusing about what we're going to do. Now, most of the files that we're going to need um, are uh, going to be found in the Arch ARM and ARM64 folders. So it's interesting because you have, you know, the 64-bit machine, and it's the same. It's got this Arch ARM boot DTS uh, QCOM. Then it has a list of numerous files in here that are the same as Arch ARM boot TTS QCOM over here. And so you have the 32-bit and the 64-bit sides of the house. And uh, I know it might seem odd, but you can't just change the 64-bit side of the house and have it work. It, that won't function quite right. Uh, you got to do it on the 32-bit side of the house uh, as well. So a little bit different than having just a 32-bit phone where you just work in the 32-bit folder and you're done. Uh, this has a 32 and a 64-bit uh, folder. Now sometimes, depending on the phone, and this is going to sound really crazy, it's a 64-bit phone, but you can actually just edit the 32-bit portion and it'll work. I don't know why, uh, but sometimes that'll work, and sometimes you need to do both the 32 and the 64-bit portion uh, for it to function properly. We're going to be changing both in this one, uh, just to be really thorough and also to uh, to get things done. So here's what's also interesting. Uh, for that, we uh, we know we have an MSM 8937 chipset because we've done our research, right? But, as well as changing things in these um, ARM and ARM64 folders, we're going to have to change part of the drivers. And in the drivers under clock, under MSN, we're going to be changing uh, the clock speed for our GPU. Now notice in here, if we look at clock-GCC, we have an 8909, 8916, 8936, and an 8952. None of those are 8937. Uh, oh, we have an 8953 here as well, and 8996. So none of those are our 8937. In this case, our 8937 is nested under this 8952. And we'll take a look at that. And if we open that up and find 8937, we're going to see it's in here uh, some 79 times. And so... Uh, this is where we're going to be making our edits for the 8937 as well. So it's a little bit confusing sometimes. How this looks on your phone may be completely different depending what chip you have, what chipset, and uh, what it's uh, built for. Typically they build them for a family of chipsets, and then they'll have one file that kind of just uh, denotes everything under it. Uh, a basic rule to consider. Since it's an 8937, it's more than an 8936, so it will probably be in the next higher uh, folder, or next higher uh, file instead of being in that one, because that only goes up to 8936. This one should only go up to 8952. This one should only go up to 8953 and 8996, respectively. So if it's 8937, it's too big for this file and it's uh, underneath this file so this is probably where you can find it. That's just a general rule to consider. It's not always the case just something helpful uh, that will hopefully get you pointed in the right direction. So the big question is what are we going to do with this GPU? Uh, in the GPU that MSM 8937 dash GPU dot DTSI remember we looked at these DTSI uh, files before, um, and uh, these DTSI files are for building parts of the kernel. And in uh, in these files, you have you know 8917 and 8937, and you know goes on to the next group, which I think 8940, 8939, stuff like that. So in this 8937, we have just the generic 8937 
which we're going to be editing as well. Then we have like audio, audio CDP, audio MTP, bus, camera, etc., 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 CPU, GPU. Well, if we want to edit the GPU, this sounds like the best place to start to me. And it turns out that it is. So that's one of the files we're going to be editing. We're going to be editing the uh, generic MSM8937 file, because that's kind of like the overarching uh, leader, as it were, or head of uh, all of these 8937 files. And then we're going to be uh, adjusting the regulator, 8937 regulator, because that controls uh, some things like voltage and stuff like that. So when you're doing something like this for yourself, remember that you probably have some generic file that covers your chip, and then there's going to be specific ones for the GPU and specific ones for the regulator uh, for the voltage. So here we go. We have that regulator DTSI. So I've got those open right here. And uh, let's just take a quick look at them. This file is not very long. It has a table. Uh, and in this table is a different uh, um, megahertz of... Uh, for the uh, DDR, for the memory, for the RAM, essentially for this. And then notice that it is a KGSL uh, 3D0, uh, so it's uh, specific for the, the system that we're working on here. Uh, and then it, uh, you know, it draws from that table to make another table of vector uh, kilobits per second. And what all this stuff means, well, it's a lot of mumbo jumbo, but essentially this is what makes it run. But here is the most important part. This right here is your table of the GPU power levels. And so like that would be a keyword to look for is power levels, power levels, uh, GPU power levels, something like that. If you're doing this on, a, on another phone that may not look identical to this one. But uh, also you can key into this keyword of frequency, freak right here. And it says the top frequency for this phone is uh, 450 megahertz. So we have, you know, uh, hertz, kilohertz, and megahertz. Now this may be just defined differently on your phone. For instance, it may just say 450 and all these zeros would be gone because it may define it by megahertz instead of by actual hertz. Kind of depends on how they uh, set up their programming. But so on this phone right now, the top speed of the GPU, the graphics processor unit, is 450 megahertz. And uh, that's when it's running in, quote, turbo mode. And then it has the uh, nominal plus mode is 400 megahertz. You have the nominal or the uh, kind of the target mode for what it should run at most of the time is 375 megahertz. And then it has some uh, saving modes right here where it drops it down to 300 and then 216 megahertz. And then finally this, this XO mode is really uh, interesting and something that can be quite dangerous to mess with. This is the mode that it goes into when your phone is essentially idling or asleep. Notice that it's only 192 megahertz. <clears throat> you can attempt to bring this down, but do keep in mind that if you bring this down, uh, you may end up in a situation where your phone can't wake up because it gets too low and essentially it stalls out. Kind of like a uh, old pickup truck, if you turn down the fuel too low in the carburetor, then uh, it'll idle really slowly, but then if you punch the gas, it may die because it can't pick up fast enough. So this is, uh, this is definitely where we're going to be hanging out here for just a minute, particularly on uh, this GPU frequency right here. Uh, and then in the main file, right here, this MSM8937, uh, we have uh, a lot of different things in here. Um, part of this deals with the CPU, and part of it deals with the GPU. So it might be faster just to search for GPU, right? And we see there's 35 references to that in here. Uh, notice here there's uh, different uh, sensor information, and uh, there's some overrides here for uh, power levels and power level bins. And then you have, once again, the same table listed over here. 
But there's two sets of tables in this one. There's uh, the normal table, table 0, or the first table. And then there's a table 1 that is actually faster than the one that we're using on our phone. But remember, this second table is not in our GPU list, and so it's not actually uh, getting utilized for this phone. Um, but it does, it does apply to certain other phones as well. So there's another uh, set of tables that we're going to have to change and edit. And then we have this regulator file where we're going to look at essentially the uh, voltage to make sure that we have enough voltage to do what it is we need to do with our phone. Um, you know, if you start changing the frequency of your chip, you're going to need to change the um, essentially the uh, voltage that you can apply uh, to that as well. And it also does have some uh, min's max voltages and initial voltages that it's trying to set for different levels and even uh, some changes that you might need to make for uh, you know adjusting uh, the Hertz up and down you may decide that you need to add a little more voltage for the minimum if you're uh, going to be bumping up the Hertz or you may decide to bring down the voltage a little bit to try to undervolt uh, we're not going to spend too much time uh, overvolting, undervolting, or anything like that. I really just want to show you this because that way when you're working on it for your phone, you're aware, hey, this regulator is usually where you're going to start changing the power levels that go with the associated frequencies that you're running. And then finally, every time that you modify something like this in a, in a kernel, uh, you know, as far as the GPU or CPU speed, there's usually some kind of driver that has to actually put it into use. So, for instance, these three options give it the option to go up to a certain speed or down to a certain speed, but this driver file actually gives it permission to do it. It actually is what drives it to, to actually utilize what it is that you're changing. So we're going to look at this real quick and uh, see what uh, kind of mayhem we can cause here. Uh, first thing that I'd like to do is let's bump up this, uh, this frequency here. And uh, Now, whenever you're bumping up a frequency, whether it's the GPU or the CPU, you should always start small. Start small, check it out, do some testing on it, make sure that it's stable, and then if you want to add some more, you can. Uh, I do have the benefit of having been able to play with this a little bit before, and the benefit of seeing a few other people's work in this regard, so uh, you know I can uh, kind of add up to some safer levels pretty easily here. So what I would like to do is I want to bump this up from 450 to 500. So we're going from 450 megahertz to 500 megahertz, and that's a pretty significant jump. Uh, but uh, we're going to give that a go and see uh, how well that works out for us. So we're going to save that. We're going to uh, come over here to our uh, DTSI, and we're going to bump this up to 500 as well. And remember, we're using table 0 for our phone, but we're going to bump it up for uh, those that are using table 1 on their phone. Not as big of a jump for them, but uh, I still think it'll be pretty handy for us to, uh, to do that for somebody who has maybe a slightly better phone. At this point, I'm not going to increase the voltage, but do be aware that if I did need to increase the voltage, this would be the place that I would do it. Okay. Now, in our clock speed, we need to set our new clock speed. So let's find 450, which was the uh, clock speed that we were using, and we're going to bump it up to 500. Now, notice right here, this clock frequency table uh, has GFX 3D clock 8937. So that's great. So if we look for this 450, we see it in a couple different places, but we don't necessarily want to place change it everywhere. Uh, but we do want to change it in uh, two places. So we have this uh, table here for the 8937, right? 
So it's a table, override table max for the GFX 3D for the 8937, and we want that to be 500. Let's go back to where we were. So we're going to say 500. And we'll check for our other 450s. And this one right here, table for the 8937. And we're going to change that to be 500. And then we're going to search for another 450. And the last one that's left is not related to what we're doing. So we don't have to worry about that one. So we're going to save our work. Uh, now, we've only done this on the 32-bit side. We should check this on the 64-bit side as well to make sure that we've got uh, everything uh, in order there, too. So, let's see. Let's open Arch ARM64, boot, DTS, QCOM, and we say MSM. 8937 DTSI, that's one of them. So we're going to find our 450, right? And there's two. We're going to say 500. And we're going to say <clears throat> 500. We're going to save that. We're going to open our um, MSM 8937-GPU. And we're going to come down here to our 450, and we're going to change that to 500. And notice there's still only one table. And we're going to open our MSM 8937-regulator. And we're going to uh, look at that here. And I don't think that we're making any changes here. Nope, because we're still using what we had before, we can check for 450, and there isn't a 450 in there at all, so definitely no changes that we have to do. They both draw from the same clock drivers. There's not a separate folder for the drivers for 64 uh, or 32-bit. So we've got all that changed. Um, we are ready to start our build. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, build it and uh, see what happens. All right, so I flashed that to the phone, and uh, let's take a look at a little video I made of uh, just that it's available. Um, one thing to point out, it would take uh, some aggressive testing to make sure that this wasn't causing any kind of issue uh, with the phone or with the uh, uh, kernel itself. So be sure that whenever you make a change, uh, I do recommend a smaller change than I made here. Uh, this I could only do because I saw work that was already done by some other people and then I played around with it a little myself before making the video. But uh, be sure to make small changes, you know, probably something around the, the scale of 5 megahertz at a time. Do lots of testing, make sure that it's working, and then, uh, you know, then you can kind of take it from there as far as uh, adding more or uh, taking away from that. So just be aware of that and uh, hopefully that was uh, as fun for you as it was for me, and uh, look forward to uh, making some more videos with you guys.